Hi everybody, uh, in the social research course. This is a quarterly update uh, of the course. You've uh, started into this thing and uh, you've uh, introduced yourself to one another. You have uh, created a research question or at least fought uh, a research question to try and come up with something after doing a neighborhood walk. You're now in the midst of working on what we call the literature review for your final paper. And this includes a couple of components. One of them, uh, you're going to be doing an exercise called The Man on the Mountain. And what The Man on the Mountain is, is just a metaphorical story. But what I'm asking you to do is to go into the OER, the Open Educational Resource. Uh, really, essentially, these are academic articles that you can find anywhere online to come up with the terms for actual research. So you have an understanding of key academic terms in a research project. And then what I'm asking you to do is to apply those research terms as best as you can to the actual metaphorical story as best as you can. That really leads you to a theoretical stream. What a theoretical stream is, is an idea, a social research idea, uh, really that you found your project on. Now in your opening PowerPoints, you'll have seen things such as conflict theory, structural functionalism, uh, Merton's strain theory, uh, the urban ecology mosaic of social worlds, among others, uh, that you can use as theoretical basis for your project. But really, I'm even more interested in that you focus on your own professional field that you've been studying at the university, and I'm sure you have articles or ideas from your professional field that can apply to some social phenomenon in your neighborhood. This is the interdisciplinary nature of this course, where it's required that you bring different disciplines into the study of social research. And one of the ways I do this is by pushing you and really forcing you to bring your own field into the project. This leads to an annotated bibliography, which becomes the core of your literature review. You'll see a PowerPoint about creating a literature review where you'll see a funnel, essentially the annotated articles at the top of the funnel bring us down to a basic idea of something that we are studying to try and connect to our project. So uh, the next project then is the development of the literature review. A little further down in this sequence, uh, after this, you're going to start with one of your first guest lectures. They are posted in the Blackboard uh, as an audio and a PowerPoint. The first one is on ethics uh, by Dr. Hare. The second one that you'll have later on is on quantitative analysis by Dr. McDonald. And third one you will have uh, in the sequence is historical research, really in a qualitative field that also will focus you on online research sources with Dr. Parides. So I'm expecting the guest lectures in sequence, but you're really gonna focus on the first one with Dr. Herr on ethics, which will lead you to a uh, number of projects, the first one being city training. Go on the link and uh, you will find the instructions uh, using CUNY's link towards city training. It's an actual professional certification uh, in understanding uh, research. The second element of this is your informed consent. I have a model for one in the Blackboard that you can use uh, for your own project. Now, you're not going to, per se, give this informed consent to other people. But as a requirement of this course, you need to get into the exercise of understanding informed consent. So I have a sample that I've used in the past. Now, there's several others. So you can go into the OER and you'll find different other versions of informed consent. That's what you'll post in that second ethics uh, requirement for this particular unit. And then for the guest lecture, you will respond with notes from the lecture itself, as well as some questions you might have in regards to ethics for your paper. So that kind of gets you into the next sequence before you get into the hard-nosed research down the line, which is qualitative and quantitative 
actual on ground work that you will do either online or because of the pandemic or actually on the street if you can get out which leads you way down the line to your final paper all right that gets you into the sequence now let's talk a little bit about the research question major project itself that you've just submitted i've gone reviewing them and there's a few things i want to note several of you have not actually incorporated your own professional field in the development of your research question this was required in other words if you're an electrical engineering student you'll look for something that relates to electronics engineering if you're a graphics design student you'll look for something perhaps in advertising graph design color about the neighborhood if you're a human services person you'd be interested in social problems that might be going on such as homelessness and so on now one concern I have, and understandably so, numbers of you have gone to the pandemic as a simplistic way to do this. Either masks, notice I'm at home so I don't have my mask on. Yeah, that's the way it's being, isn't it? We can't understand each other. But uh, some of you gone with masks, some of you gone with social distancing and all this. Now that's fine, but if you're going to do that, you still have to integrate your own professional field into it, to it. And this becomes inherently difficult for someone in a technological field such as engineering uh, or uh, even in the creative arts such as uh, music or in uh, graphic design, illustration, advertising, computer technology and so on and so forth. So I'm expecting that you actually nurture a project within your field. Now in a lot of my tutorials I give different examples of different students who have done this very very well and indeed if you go to the last part of our content on the blackboard you'll see a few sample papers that also are good examples of students who integrated their own professional field into the actual research question. Now where do you go from here with the research question? What you landed may be your final, but for many of you, you're going to now start adjusting and changing and shifting that research question uh, as you nuance it down the road. What I needed in the beginning was for you to land something, so you're on the road to questioning something. But now that you're in the process, it's all open for you to adjust that. Indeed, I've had some students adjust their question up to halfway through the course but their research project becomes even better. That does not mean all of a sudden you have all this time just to kind of sit around and relax. And I'll think about it a bit more. I'm gonna go on vacation because I don't have to be in a classroom and I'll come back to it. No, don't get that attitude because you're gonna fall behind on this because when it comes into the actual on-ground research, it takes some time to do well. But it's perfectly fine for you to formulate new research ideas. Indeed, some research ideas call, come from what we call the ground or the subaltern. They come from understanding a little bit more about the place you're studying. And we've had some really good uh, papers that have actually emerged from people studying a particular phenomenon that then adjusts towards their particular project. So with your research question, you're going to see a grade, and it's going to be a good grade, because I generally don't bash you away because you're learning this. But know that it has to align with your professional field, and it has to have some kind of social phenomenon that is key to this project. All right, I think that gets you going. Know that I am online live with email on Monday and Wednesday mornings. What that means is I'm not going to be talking to you face-to-face -face, uh, or with phone or anything but I will be actively live on the email which means you'll get a response within a minute or two it's sort of like a pseudo chat room all right I also have not created any deliberate collaborative ultra sessions uh, in this course uh, for various numbers of reasons it wasn't very feasible in how we do it so your key to answering questions is to use the email judiciously on Monday and Wednesday morning, set up some time if you need for us to meet that way electronically. I will also answer emails throughout the week. 
sometimes instantaneously, sometimes it might take a day or two or more, depending on where I'm at. Okay, so that's my contact point. One final thing, don't be late from here on in with your assignments. I've been graceful in this first quarter, but as we move on here, I will start giving zeros to assignments that are not turned in by the time they are due, especially the small assignments. You will get caught with this. I've had a few students in other classes that said, well, I went on vacation, professor. Well, you're not in vacation. Those weekly assignments are if, as if you were in a class that week, and if you didn't turn it in that week means that you weren't there. I can't give you credit for attendance, nor for grade. So those little two pointers will add up over time. One or two or three missed aren't going to affect you dramatically. But if you consistently start keeping these late and getting zeros, you're not going to do well in this course. It's the easiest way to give a great way grades. All right. Hopefully that helps you, gets you, keeps you going. Keep researching, and most of all, stay healthy. Goodbye.